As always, this episode of the 1878 FM podcast is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Make Green King your go-to destination for the season's final stretch. Why? For one, you can watch every televised Toffees game down with delicious food and refreshing beverages. And with 900 sports clubs dotted around the UK, chances are you're within walking distance of your local Green King. Let's be honest, watching football is way better with friends and family. So get the squad together for every televised Premier League fixture in an atmosphere worth sharing. That includes huge title showdowns, race for European qualification and the nail-biting relegation system. Pointers. Don't forget to download the Green King Sports app to enjoy your exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there is a game on. Right, on with the podcast. Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. The final Premier League game has been played, so we're going to... I was going to say pour over it, we're not. We're going to talk about it, obviously, but it's a full house. It's good. It's Dave and Sam are here, as always. How are we, boys? Very good, thank you. Nice weekend all round. So yeah, happy days. Yeah, I'm good. Feeling good. Feeling ready for the uh, the season to be done and dusted and over with. Although weirdly, there's a bit of momentum now. I'm thinking like throw <laughs> another five games in. We could just <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> see what happens with it. Why not? Why not? Ped looking very bleary eyed. You were at. You say that like I was drinking or something. No, I just mean you just look tired. I, I had two bottles of seven up all day. You just look tired. You and just look tired. That cost eighty-seven pounds. Well, it will do. It will do. <laughs> London prices <laughs> not getting any cheaper. Um, you were obviously at the Emirates yesterday. A I thought I thought Everton play quite well. You know, I said mm. this on me after match stuff. It it's really difficult because Arsenal deserve to win. But Everton deserved the point, and that I know that makes zero mm. sense. But what I mean is the job Everton did on a team who could still win the Premier League with about 15, 16 minutes to go, because it was still 2-1 at, at the year. Uh, and obviously City had a goal, uh, sorry, West Ham had a goal disallowed in the 88 minute as well, yeah. Tom Suchek, which would have made it, and Everton still won one at the time. But Everton did quite a good job on, like, Arsenal, fantastic side. I thought Everton did quite a good job. Yeah, there. I thought we played, mm. I thought we I thought we played well. I thought we contained them really well, and then we broke with some kind of purpose. Mm. And I thought, you know, we were we were well deserving to be, you know, drawing it at half time I was a little disappointed actually I'm obviously disappointed that we've conceded a goal yeah. like that um, but no I thought I thought we deserved it and, mm. and with all the emphasis was on them to come and try and beat us I, I thought we we shut them down quite well and we showed mm. and, it, and showed a real measure of professionalism as well on a day that could have easily have got away from another team well, because... like Aston Villa but I yeah. can think well exactly <laughs> yeah there was, pur- there was a purpose to it wasn't it there was you know, let's not be embarrassed again. You've got like little dicky masters in the in the in the building, and mm. the, you, you, there had to be an element of professionalism. I think about the job, and I think I think we got that. I think you know the 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 fans showed that to the players at the end mm. that that it was um, it was a good run out, and we mm. were unlucky. Dave, just mm. when you think it was probably about five weeks ago now, mm-hmm. today in fact it was mm-hmm. that we went to Chelsea and were beaten six nil. Um, yep. And I'll be honest, I was very worried after that game because we looked, we looked on our knees, and you were like, "Where are they going to get some results from?" The irony is, the way the other teams have done, we we were safe anyway that day. But yeah. um, but this shows just how big it's. I want to overstate it, but that's been a big turnaround, hasn't it? Between getting beat five 0 at Stamford Bridge, the five games Everton went unbeaten before yesterday. And to mm-hmm. turn in a performance like that, like Ped said on the day when mm-hmm. Everton could have gone out and been rolled. You know, I, I'll be honest, I was fearing the three or four nil because I just thought they've got to win to yeah. us. It's a hot day. It doesn't really matter. So big credit really for to Sean Dykes, the coaching staff and the players for the way they've turned the situation around in five weeks, really. I totally agree. You know, and it, we didn't think it at the time, but that Chelsea result was the best thing that ever happened to us mm. because it did. Mm. I mean, but you know, genuinely it was the, it was a really harsh wake up was. that was much needed. And it was, you know, kind of a, do you think that we focused on Dave that, Oh crap, we are, we, we are actually in massive trouble here and everyone switched on. Do you think? 
I think it did. But, you know, in, in the same way that you can look at the effect that the points deduction in December had on mm. the squad and the mentality and subsequently the results, it had the same effect. Mm. You know, mm. it brought them it brought them together. It mm. was a wake up call. And as I say, the run that they went on after that was incredible. And, you know, I agree with everything that Ped said about yesterday in so much as they did they they turn in a professional performance but they look confident again and mm. and that's the whole thing you know and especially and we keep mentioning it but especially with dom i think he just looks a different player he looks mm. a more confident player you can just see it in his body language and we've seen that for you know for weeks now um and uh it felt very much to me well it, it was what it was in, in as much as the pressure was off yesterday um, and they looked like a side that were playing without fear, without mm. those inhibitions, because as you say, there was nothing riding on it. Um, but as such, they, you know, the problem that they've had before earlier on in the season is they just look like they were carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders. And you could see their heads down as they were coming out the tunnel, almost like, Jesus, we can't afford to lose this one, mm. lads. Whereas... You know that's not the case anymore, and and as I say, the performances and the results have, have shown that. And I thought they, you know, while it was disappointing not to have got a, you know, got any points yesterday, I thought they've, um, you know, they've they've capped a season with a, a decent, you know, a decent performance to go out with. I mean, Sam, we were. What was it? It was at the 89th minute when they scored or whatever it was. And, you know, we were very close to finishing the season, six games unbeaten, which after that Chelsea game, if you'd have said Everton won't lose another game now and they had Liverpool and Arsenal in that mm -hmm. mix, um, everyone would be limbless now, wouldn't they? They'd be, we'd have bit everything off from every, everyone, wouldn't we? But they have, they have put in some strong performances. And yesterday... I thought, like Ped said, I thought even though they did have a lot of shots and stuff, there was those occasions where they had like four shots in one move yeah. and we got blocks mm. in. Jordan mm. Pickford made one really, really good save. The Martinelli stop. Was yeah, super, the Martinelli one. Full stretch. Yeah. And then the, the block. Uh, other than that, you know, I thought we defended really well. And that shows that togetherness and that professionalism that they have shown in the last kind of half a dozen mm. games, doesn't it? And does that, for you, bode well going into next season? I know there's, we'll get on to the other stuff in a minute, but just now with the with the season finishing, I know this is the longest question ever, so just give an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I've asked you. My answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Final bodes, yeah. bodes well is mm. the phrase I, I had in my head. Yeah. And what bodes well now might not. Even though you before, these. hang on, sorry, before you knew the question, the th words that were in your head were bode well. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what and, that's it's so that mind worrying that no, constantly. No, in no, my no head. that's the just like saver in my mind is just bode well. Bode yeah. well. He's a, he's a left the... winger who we've got our eye on. He's got a bit of yeah, pace. Yeah, the uh, plays in the Norwegian league. Yeah. Bode well. <laughs> bode well. Bode well. Sorry, bode well. <laughs> <laughs> but but if bode well is the future tense, mm -hmm. I don't know what the present tense is because what bodes well now might not be well uh, yeah <laughs> next season yeah because we don't know what the future exactly is well, exactly going to be here and at the moment it feels like everton are packing for the holiday but we don't know where we're going yeah we don't know what we don't know what mm. clothes to take very much don't forget your toothbrush chris evans it's a bit like that. yeah you know mm. that kind of thing classic yeah chair yeah. not with your suitcase underrated like entertainment yeah. shows i like, like you know like, what what a opinion. show that will come back onto yeah. that because i love that yeah show. please do but please anyway do. let's get back to bode well the left winger from norway yeah He's got a great right foot as well, but you've got to really <laughs> lean him into that. But yeah. I think the, 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 I was only half joking about wanting the season to carry on mm. because, it, like, it's been such a tumultuous season. And right, then you should have been tumultuous, Sam. I'll always, mm. that, you know, it's, I've, I've got a thesaurus I've been leafing through before okay. we started recording. Which bodes um, well, one of the phrases. <laughs> no, I've written that in Biro <laughs> in the back. But I think the, the, when we got the points and we knew we were safe and then the relaxation and the game last week and the, and the Luton game as well, and we were like, oh, we can just enjoy this nothing game. Mm. The temptation for the players to be on the beach, which I've seen Everton players put the flip-flops on way before the last game of the season. Mm. And November. much better teams than this Everton squad do that. And just and I think we've had a couple of last days at, at, at Arsenal, haven't we? Mm, we were yeah. absolutely battered. Mm -hmm. And 
I didn't actually feel like we were going to get battered. I thought we'd lose. I thought we'd probably lose 2 or 3 nil, to be honest. Mm. And I think the way the game went, it was kind of really disappointing that they got that late goal in the end. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, we can talk about the handball and all of that. But it does kind of give you some confidence that if if we don't at least know what the squad's going to be next season, it gives me a little bit more confidence in the manager and the coaching setup that they're able to instill this level of professionalism mm. and, and able to fix on a plan that kind of, you know, works to some degree. Mm. Might not be easy on the eye, but it kind of works for that squad. That gives you a little bit of hope going forward um, because that's not something that we've seen a, a lot of this season. And the way the players play when they don't have that, Dave, you talked about that weight, weight of the world mm. on the shoulders, like mm. literally coming out the tunnel, mm. looking like, you know, just like they've just been woken up. But I With think the Michael Keane face. The, the, <laughs> Other faces are yeah. available, of course. I mean, but nobody embodies that face more than Michael yeah. Keane, mm. I would Woody. suggest. Woody. Yeah. Yeah. They call it they call it just they call it Phil Jones syndrome. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But they all had that. It was going through all the squads. Mm. And we saw when the points deductions were hanging over our heads and the appeals were pending. We didn't, the, the players were just under such pressure. Mm-hmm. And I don't care who you are, unless you're fighting for titles or you're right at the bottom, you shouldn't have to be playing under immense pressure every yeah. single week. You know, there's certain mm-hmm. games that require an extra level, but, you know, a lot of the time, if, you, if you're in the mid middle of the table, which is where we are, most games mm-hmm. should be played with a little bit of kind of, you know, you can sort of pull your socks down a little bit and just and just try and express yourself a bit more. Mm. I think we've seen that a little bit over the last few weeks. Mm. I, I mean, Ped, do, have we skated over, skated around, use whatever phrase you want for this one, but have we kind of brushed over just how difficult it must have been for those? Because don't forget, yeah. Boris were given a points deduction, mm. but the they played the next game after the points deduction, so yeah. they got the four points, and he knew that there was an appeal going on. But it was, but they were there's your four points, off you go. We were given ten, mm. and we knew mm. that there was an appeal, but the appeal was like three months, whatever, and we had to play for yeah. that period of time minus ten points, which mm. I still, I still look and think. I, because we obviously coped with the two points much better. We just sort of went two points, we have to get on with it. But the ten point thing, yeah, that, yeah. that was huge, wasn't it? It put pressure season. on anyone, just going back to what Dave was saying then. It's like if we if we could have a season where you're obviously winning, say, every third game, something we talked about last week. Mm. You're winning every third game, like like sort of what we've done all season, but obviously we've done it in chunks. And that does take the pressure off, doesn't it? If you're not always looking at the table and looking over your shoulder all the time. Mm. Because, I mean, we were safe. We were safe when we played Burnley. Burnley after that. Um, and in reality, we were safe. God, probably like, I don't know, January, February. With with, with the, you know, with you add, added oh, with on the, the points. points. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, mm. so if you, should, you shouldn't have to be looking over your shoulder. And that's something that... Do you think we'd have gone that many games without winning? No, I, I honestly don't. I don't okay. think we would have. And I think Sean Dyche, uh, this, is, this is obviously something he has to look at next season is... Because it's not obviously the start of the season and not winning till we played Bournemouth. <laughs> obviously, was a big problem as well. Because again, you have that thing where it's it, the Bournemouth game become must wins. Mm. You shouldn't be having must wins. I don't. Like, we like, had one like, like, like yeah, we, like um, both the lads are saying there. Yeah, you shouldn't have must wins. Mm. So the idea of losing four games at home, yeah, um, you know. Uh, that that became that became a, a must win, and then there's been loads of times during the season. This is a must, win. and you shouldn't really have must wins. You should be able to just because mm. you look like where Fulham have finished, and you look at like um, Palace, obviously towards the end of the season. So that's maybe not the best example, but like teams around that area, if they just mill about game to game. They win a one, and then they lose one, and then you know they go get back to winning one, and it's just that's what we need for next season is 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 that ability to just pick up wins every three games or so. Fulham. Crystal Palace, Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah. Wolves. Well, Bournemouth, Bournemouth. Wolves. No, I'm saying it. Wolves, all won the same amount as. Yeah, it? yeah. And Fulham, Fulham, and Fulham, and and Bournemouth are really good examples of two mm. teams that no one's ever said were in relegation apart from Bournemouth start relegation troubles, and they just picked up wins, and they just bobbed along all season, being able to have good games, have bad games, and not too much noise around them, and mm. cause a lot of our noise come from the points deduction. 
But if we could do that next season, then mm. that would be huge for everybody's not, mental health for a start. Yeah. But just just being able to play football, allowing those lads to just like Sam's alluded to there, wanting more games. Like if there's not huge pressure on every game, then you can go out and play a bit more football, and the manager can feel a little bit more relaxed. I said to you, didn't I? That going into that. Um, Sheffield United game last week it was like the first time that for so long I've walked into Goodison Park just totally and utterly relaxed because there was nothing on it and I know you'd always want to win and I wanted to win of course I wanted to win but like I said this to my dad yesterday he was like isn't it so much more enjoyable watching a game of footy when with Everton where it there's nothing on it. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I'd love to be watching. I'd love Everton to be in Arsenal's position yesterday and a chance to mm. win the, the Premier League, of course. But we've got away from. We just haven't been allowed, have we, lads, to to just watch Everton and kind of just see how the game plays out. It's it's been because at the start of the season, every point's crucial, isn't it? Because you want to win yeah. and it's setting where you are. And I'm not suggesting that it'd be lovely to have five years of that yesterday where, oh, it doesn't matter if we lose and all that, of course not, because you want progress. But we do need to get back to being, wanting to win games, but it not being the end of the world if we don't, don't we? Because I think for three years now, it has been unbelievable pressure. And of course, within that, we also had COVID, which was very difficult for people. Mm. So it's been a while since you can enjoy watching Everton, do you know what I mean? And I'm not suggesting next season it'll all be great because obviously we'll get onto that in a sec. But there has been a big upturn in the last few weeks and I think the manager deserves credit and I've criticised him this season because I think there's times when he's deserved criticism this season because I think he was too stubborn at one stage. Mm. I think I don't accept the four months without a win. And I never will for any Everton manager, even if it was an Everton manager I idolised. I would be asking questions if we went four months without a victory. But what I will caveat that is, he has had a lot to contend with this season. He really has. Mm. And those points mm. deductions and ownership nonsense that's gone on and everything else. How good a job has he done, Dave, in your opinion, in terms of just where Everton have ended up finishing? Um. Uh... I think the assessment is very different now yeah. to what it would have been yeah. five or six weeks ago, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, because, you know, as Ped said, you know, we've we've done it in chunks. Yeah. We haven't been consistent. We haven't been winning every, you know, third game and whatnot mm. and sort of picking up those points with some regularity. It has been in chunks. Um, I do, however, think that the review that we give Sean Dyche now post-Chelsea has to be a good one. As you say, he's had a huge amount to contend with. Um, I think he has handled himself impressively throughout the season, to be honest with you, mm. even when he's been under pressure mm. um, from the fan base as a whole, you know, and we represent that. And um, yeah, I think he's, he's always, he's always come out. He's always spoken. Um, he's always looked at the positives. He's never thrown players under the bus or anything. Um, and, you know, especially going through that, that period of, of just no wins for four months, as you say, but you know, he was like, no, we need to improve. We go again on Saturday and, and, and off we go. And, and I think, you know, I think he does deserve a, a, a huge amount of credit and the way that he's, the way that he's got the squad through the end of the season post Chelsea um is you know it's a really really impressive feat and that is great management i would say on his part and i think that when you look at that run of games and that's why quite rightly you know he, he won manager of the month didn't he you know mm. i mean he's his his performances as a manager have been up there albeit you know it's, it's a different job at different parts of the table but he's been up there with the best of them i think you know latterly um i just wonder whether as a fan base we, or rather how much we contribute as a fan base to the pressure on the players. Mm. I you think, know, it, yeah. it has to be a significant part of that, doesn't it? Mm. You know, because of the size of club, the size of expectation, mm. um, operating at the wrong end of the table, you know, because 
we're not a Bournemouth, mm. no. and we're not a Fulham, and we're not a Palace. It's Brighton. a whole different mm. ball game, or, or Brighton. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. Um, and as such, I think that that's why, well, possibly why we have the problems that we do, and 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 we we certainly contribute to that. Players with their heads down because they're walking out in front of forty thousand people who are desperate to see an upturn in their fortunes. Mm. Mm. You know, and that pressure has certainly, at parts of the season, got to them, and has had a detrimental effect. Do you think? Do you think this is for both of you? Do you think that that's an that's been the issue with managers and obviously some players? Is that mm. obviously they just can't deal with that kind of pressure, and certainly managers haven't, haven't been able to deal with the pressure. Whether they're good managers or not, they just haven't been able to deal with it. I don't think don't think Frank Lampard could deal with that kind of pressure. Do you, do you think he gets he he he's I don't know. Do you think he's always got it, Dice, or do you think he fully gets it now? Sort of how big we are and the pressure that brings with it. And obviously, when you have pressure, then things will be, you know, we, we do this all day, every day. And mm. you, we obviously, things do build up to a point where you, you know, not not say the wrong thing, but obviously, like I said, there you lose for four, don't win for four months. Mm. Things are going to be said. Obviously, <laughs> negative things are going to be said. It's emotional. Do you, yeah. do you think he gets that now? That that how big this football club is and what it means to that fan base. I think so. I mean, I I I, I would I, I've given the benefit of the doubt and say that he knew how big the job was and the club was and the fan base was when he came in. But I think even more so now, um, and that has to be. You know, when you say about the manager's ped. When you look at all those different managers, all good managers mm. and all very different managers as well, and none of them have been able to make make a success of it. Yeah. You know, from Silva to Carlo to you know Kuman. I mean, these are all world class managers. Mm. Um, I think some of them. I think you're right. I think some of them haven't haven't just been able to handle the pressure of the, of the job, the I job think... itself, the size of the club, yeah, and yeah. the kind of expectations of. of of the fan base mm. and it can only be that really when you when you look at it because you look at all the different factors in success or failure and the one thing that has to link all of those you know unsuccessful periods of management together has to be mm. or certainly a large percentage of it has to be the fan base it has to be mm. you know no i i totally get what you're saying because um i think some managers you know, you've just mentioned there, Cooman. I think someone like Cooman came to Everton and always thought he was bigger than the football club and always yeah. thought it was a stepping stone for Barcelona. So therefore, mm. never ever was willing to number one was never willing to put down roots. Mm. And I think that I think that's something that we we demand. I mean, we talk about this quite a lot about Sean Dice saying, you know, we want this fella, if he's serious, we want this fella mm. to put down roots at Everton Football Club. We mm. want him to 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 integrate into Everton. And the Everton community, and he's certainly doing that. If you go down Lark Lane, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, he's an enjoy. He's enjoying, it. and that's that's brilliant. Look, I have no problem with that, you know. And some managers haven't got that. They've just saw Everton as a stepping stone, or or with Frank Lampard, you know, as soon as the game's over on a Saturday, he's back down to London. I, I can't have. To, I, for me, I know they have families mm. and stuff, but I just don't. I don't get that at all. You're either mm. in, or, you're either in, or you're not. You're either mm. the Everton manager fully in because you look. I mean, just add all the historics of Klopp, of Klopp leaving. No. But no. But let's be it's honest, like life. that is a fella <laughs> who absolutely poured his heart and soul yeah. into Liverpool Football mm. Club for nine years, no, and did. that's why he, he looks he the way he does he now. And that's you know because he Not has put teeth. Well, yeah, he's had to have the teeth, there. the hair, the fillers, the mm. everything. But he's poured his no, heart. He has. He has. He's poured his heart and soul, and Liverpool fans have seen the the benefits of that, and that's why they love him so much. Mm. Um, no, we've given and we, everything. We sure. haven't, we haven't maybe seen that, and we demand that. But that's all we demand, isn't it? That's all we demand. Mm. We don't demand trophies or or to finish in the European places. They're the things we want, but we don't demand them. Um, well, isn't that on, isn't son. that one of the reasons why we look back so fondly on David Moyes? Because yeah. I know he was there for yes. a long yeah. time, yeah. and he, I know we finished, you know, we finished fifth a couple of times, fourth. We yeah. were always mm. sort of, apart from the odd season, we were kind of top eight. But he was. He was the club. He was the he was mm -hmm. the centerpiece of the club. He had his his roots, his tentacles throughout the club. You got the sense that the whole outlook was based on what he wanted and what he needed, yeah. from recruitment to the, you know everything on the pitch. And it was just, I think that's what you really 
That's what you want to see as a yeah. as a football fan. I think with Dice, the latter end of this season, I think you're right, Ped. I think we're starting to see a little bit more. Uh, at, whether it's just the words he chooses to mm. use or the the, the manner uh, the way he speaks in interviews or you know the tracksuit thing we've talked yeah, about loads, yeah. but st- stuff like that is kind of like like he's got the badge on him on him yeah. now. So he's he's a mm. bit more. He's not just a guy in a suit managing our team. He's mm. part of Everton Football Club, and that's a big thing. And obviously, the results help. I think Dice is probably he's he, he's perhaps benefited from that pressure being on him, but because the ownership saga's gone on that long, there's no mm. one there to sack him anyway. I, so yeah. he, he can mm. go four months without winning. But I would say with Dice, one thing, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I don't think he's really alluded to the the other issues at the club, other than the points deductions which he's mentioned, and quite rightly. I don't think he's alluded to the stuff that we don't know about until very recently when we're, mm. we're actually safe. Because yeah. I think he said, mm. you don't even know what I've had to deal with here. And yeah. it, I, if he's only said that when we're safe, I think that shows incredible leadership because it'd be so easy as a manager, manager under pressure to just go, listen, you don't know what I'm dealing with here. Mm. This, yeah. is a, this is an absolute I shit think- show and, and I'm doing my best. He- you're right, but he definitely started to allude to it when, because I think after Chelsea, I think he felt he might be changed. Well, I think it's the only time he's really felt vulnerable, and I think he, because I think that Chelsea game shocked him as well as it yeah. shocked everyone else. I think if you listen to his press conference after it, the build up to the for, cause don't forget that Forest game was huge. That's probably Evans' mm-hmm. most impressive result. The derby, of course, it goes without saying, but the pressure on that Nottingham Forest game at Goodison was immense. And his his press conference before it was, if you watch it, it there was a shift of almost like things are going on here, and and it's it's different, you know. It's so and and what if what I feel I felt for him is that he has he is the one who has had to carry the, the club the whole season because nobody else has put their head above the parapet and gone. No, the manager's having to deal with difficult. We're in a tough. Nobody. It's just go ahead, Sean. Mm. You go and make it all all right for us, and mm. that's a really difficult thing to do. And I just wonder how much input Ian Wone has had into that as well. But because obviously Ian Wone is a big Evertonian and his family are Evertonian, so but that's where, that's that. important. That's things we've said before. Though it's like there has been a standoff between him. Like yesterday, he saw he came over to the away fans, but mm. it didn't get like too close but no. he came over and clapped and obviously i'm not sure how, how much he actually, he's, ever, he's ever done that but I, I do think that's so important now he's been here for for 18 months do you think he should be not giving it the clap no no i that. don't because that's but, not him but do you think he does need to no he, show a bit more no no, no no i'm not okay. i'm not too bothered about that because that's who he is mm. but what i do want to see him do and i'd love to see him be you know i've said this before Come, come and meet a few more Evertonians. Do a few, mm. do a few like whatever it takes. You know, go to a few fan, uh, supporters club nights. Meet, you know, do like the tea parties like Alan Myers do. Come and come and integrate yourself a little bit because I still mm. feel like he's a little bit standoffish he's aloof, with, isn't he? with the fan base. But it, but I think if you really want to be accepted mm. by a fan base, mm. and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying he's not accepted. But for it to work, bond to, to be it, that bond to be stronger, yeah. I do think you need to understand. But we haven't seen him, have we? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You need to understand the issues the fan base have got. I'm not sure he's always got, he always understands. He's come. He's come into a story in nearly in the third act. He's yeah. walked mm. in in the third act without and, someone, giving without script, someone really. understanding, yeah. giving him the heads up of what's going on. Mm. Is that weird though that comes in, you know, 15 minutes into a film with a hot dog, a popcorn and a drink and sits down and you're like, what the fuck are you going to understand this film? Mm. Fucking hell, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's a, <laughs> we've all seen them. You're like, what are you, what are you doing? Where have you been? Mm. Where have you been? For 20 minutes. <laughs> so he's coming to me. think... Do you think Lampard was the, was almost the other way? Because I know I yeah. totally agree with you, Ped, about like he was back to London, and that's yeah. not really how I want my Everton manager to be. I want them to be embedded in the community, yeah. in the city, and the, the mm. club. But Lampard seemed to he, he seemed to use the phrase Evertonian and blue a lot in mm. his interviews. And I remember when uh, Everton went to America, was it was it Minnesota? Mm. I can't remember where it was. And he was di- giving some talk, and he said, you know, as a blue, I knew this was going to happen. And he it was. was. You know, in hindsight, maybe he was just referring to Chelsea. Yeah. But it sounded like he was almost trying to integrate himself ahead of where his kind of performances I, were. Yeah, what? I think someone had obviously got in his ear and said, you know, 
try and get that but I think Bill Kenlight was like how do you think you're going to be accepted as a Cockney which I mm. when that come out and Frank Lampard was yeah. saying that I was worried about where I was from being accepted that kind of blew my mind because I was like I haven't heard this from any other manager yeah. you know so who said that to you? I haven't the same with Sean Dyke, though. Whoever someone remember when he called yeah, yeah, that Sean Dyke was almost saying things as mm. if like uh, no, that's someone what I'm had got in his on, ear on and day gone, one, on the f- these on the first press or conference. Or I always remember it because we sat here and watched it in the first press conference. He alluded to someone telling him, at, someone at the club telling him why fans were had a problem with the board, and it was. Bollocks! It was utter bollocks. Whatever someone had told them from the press, mm. uh, from the media room, was utter nonsense. And I think straight away that put him on the wrong foot. And I would love for him to come and sit down with fans and, and be like, you know, all this stuff happened. And he, like, do you know this all happened? And he, if he might go, oh yeah, I don't know that now. Mm. Uh, but I would love it if he because. He, he, he alluded to it last week and it, it made me laugh actually because he mentioned how he did an interview I think I mentioned it last week on the pod and he was like oh did he love you this week and he was like yeah I, I've had a look and it looks like they love me this week so, he, so like he's been on Twitter or he's watched this or something mm-hmm. I don't know but it's like that's great and I get that but that's that's an emotional ride you have to understand why we are the way we are and as I said I, you've oh. come in in the third act mm. And yet you're having to deal with all of this grief. Mm. But can't we? Can we sit down and tell you why we are where we I'm are? Watching. They just Dave's points that interesting about like, oh, you know, have we contributed to the mess? Well, we have in a way, but it's definitely subconsciously. It's not. It's not. I don't mean not, that as a criticism, no, by no, the no, way. No, no, you, you, don't, don't, you know, and but, I think, I think, I think when I say that, you know, it's it applies to all of us. Yeah, no, and, but, and it's it's kind of only a good thing because of I guess the, standards. Yeah, I've, absolutely. Dave, I've said this before. If we don't, if we don't mm. hold the club to standards of what's mm. gone before, nobody will. I'm watching. I started watching '99 last night about United um, on Prime about that season when he won the treble. And oh, there was about a nice cream. Yeah, um, and <laughs> it is a bit flaky. But Leighton Baines. Um, no, their fans are on at the time yeah. getting interviewed, and like the question in Alex Ferguson. Mm. And all, and this isn't good enough, and he needs to. Yeah. He's been there for he's been there for a few years, and he's done quite 86, well for you. He was, he, Eighty-six, uh, so he's you know, been there thirteen exactly, years. Exactly, he point. knows what he was doing, and they're like questioning. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't done it, and you know they need to understand where we are as mm-hmm. a like, what this football club is, and it's like you're listening, going, you cheeky bastard. No, but it's all like saying that hindsight, no, no, though, isn't no. it? But the flip to it, you're going. Yeah, but what they're doing is they're holding Manchester yeah, yeah. United up as this is what we yeah, expect. Yeah. So I've got no issue with Evertonians mm. going. I hold still old Everton to 1985 mm. because that was the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest ever Everton. It was unbelievable, that team. It should mm. have done more and Europe and all mm. that. We know the history of it. Mm. But that's my Everton. Yeah, yeah. And because that was burnt into me as a, a kid. So... Everything else that's followed, yeah. I've always been at odds with because it isn't really yeah. my Everton. Do you know what I mean? This version yeah. of Everton now is so far removed from, mm. you know, yeah, Zach's yeah. 13. Well, when I was 13, Everton were lead champions. And the, the difference mm. between his perception, Ned is 23. Ned's perception of Everton is a team that might fight for mm. a top eight or be in a relegation yeah, yeah. battle. That's not Everton football. No, it's not. Mm. We have to... Well, that- maintain I think the standards of what where we once were otherwise we will become a team that just fights relegation yeah we definitely need to do that and I suppose Mm. just doing it in a realistic way yeah of course and and understanding that we're not going to be you know getting top four next season Mm, yeah what I would say is without the point deductions where we would have finished you're not that far from pushing on for Mm. the conference league place for the following season and then you're like okay so you can see a bit of momentum there but Mm. Whether that'll happen, I mean, that's a different conversation because we don't know what's yeah. going to happen with the squads. But I, I, mm. I mean, I do, I do think, Dave, you've got a really good point there about how, and I suppose not just the Everton fan base, but how every fan base mm. plays into the the overall perception and the overall performance of of a club. Mm. Because I I often wonder about Everton fans, like compared us to Aston Villa, for instance. I don't really hear much about toxic Aston Villa mm. atmospheres. And toxic mm. Aston Villa fans. Mm. Yet they're a similar kind of size club. Mm. Yeah. Not that dissimilar in terms of honours. Yeah. But obviously their league titles came a few years before our last league titles and our last great team. Mm. And I don't know whether that's that that recency. I know 85, 87 is not recent, but we all remember it as kids. Like mm. you said, Baz, we all remember it. So we kind of 
we're all comparing every Everton team to this title winning team and quite rightly trying to drag them up. Mm -hmm. But it's very difficult for anyone to live up to that expectation. I suppose it's like the stepping stones that need to, to go and place in between. It, it, it's funny because obviously this week with the Spurs stuff as well, and I've seen uh, Posta Coglu yesterday, he was asked whether you know he would have took fifth, and he went, no, first, that's all I'll, I'll accept. Mm -hmm. And no one's no one's gone, Spurs fans are toxic for what happened last Wednesday mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. They've just gone, oh, that's been fed by Liverpool fans. They've think? just, they've like, just, yeah. But, but boo, you're gonna boo. Exactly. I mean, yesterday was three thousand here. Yesterday sold mm -hmm. out. Okay, there was a couple of Arsenal fans and and quite a lot of the the players' families in the away end, which was a bit weird. But um, you know, there's three thousand out. You know, holding their own against whatever fifty five, whatever it is, mm -hmm. Arsenal fans on the biggest mm -hmm. day of some of their lives. And it's amazing, you know, you're, you're part of a family. Mm. Home games been sold out, been sold out for for years, and mm. will be sold out for years to come. What, whatever happens within the ground, the people are there. The people are asking the question. And for too long, the people who run the club didn't want to listen to that. Mm. And so everything, because something I noticed yesterday at the ground is nearly every single person had an Arsenal top on. Like yeah. everybody mm. had an Arsenal yeah. top on. So whatever it is, whether it's home, way, training, mm. ground, whatever it is, they're all wearing Arsenal with Adidas on it. Mm. And you think of the money that generates. And because yeah. they've all bought in, they've all bought onto but this. But that has done that. No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying our fan base would do that because mm. it's diff but what I'm But you can just see just by looking at them, they're representing the club mm. straight away. Mm. They're saying, we're Arsenal, we're proud. We 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 the and we don't always get that we don't get that with our fan base and it's I'm not saying we should by the way I'm just saying you can see it sometimes when a club is being represented and it's that's what we want isn't it that's we want to feel represented out there and we want to feel like you can walk around with your head your head held high no matter what and um, I think if Sean Dice just comes to the fan base a little bit and just asks those questions. Mm. I think I think that bond can can be made. Yeah. Uh, let's just wrap this up, this bit up. But was it handball for you, gentlemen? Because for me, I don't. I honestly, I know it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but I don't understand how the goal was given. The minute the referee went over to the screen, I thought, well, that good because that's the correct decision. And for him not to give the handball, I I don't understand it. I really don't. So I mean, what were what were your take on it? I thought it was handball, but then I realised I don't know the rules anymore. <laughs> and then I just sort of checked out and thought, would I be annoyed if it was given against us? And of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Am I annoyed that it was given for them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that change what I feel? I don't. I don't honestly know. And I know Sean Dice said a similar thing. I don't know what the rules are. They need to mm -hmm. be clarified. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't, I felt like it was handball mm. is my answer. Okay, yeah. Dave? Likewise, my gut feeling was it was handball. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't understand how you can look at it and go, yeah, it's all right, that. Because Gabriel mm. Jesus motions his hand he plays the, the ball, ball and knocks the ball yeah. into his own pack. Yeah. It's not like he shielded it, pulled it down, had his back to Tarkovsky, spun him, and he went on a move and, and you could go, well... He knocks the ball forward into his path and runs yeah. through, and he scores. Sample, score. sample. I, do, I, I, I don't well, get on it. On match of the day, on match of the day, the uh, it was a guy Mowbray, I think it was commentating. I mm. think it was him, and he's talking like uh, ref goes to the screen. He's mm. like, "Oh yeah, this will definitely be chalked off. It's definitely yeah. on yeah. ball." Oh, oh, he's giving it. Yeah. So that was just that, you know, yeah. that's like you can tell the tone of surprise in exactly, his voice yeah. completely. Yeah. And then, but then the, the the analysis afterwards, they were saying, "Yeah, they were right to give that goal." Of course, sort of yeah. In old, and I was like, I oh, right, okay." <laughs> I think even in old money, that's offside. It, yeah. That's handball, on ball, no it matter is. what. Yeah. He plays the mm. ball with his hand, with his arm, yeah, and he gets an advantage out of it below the t-shirt line. It's it's just, it's, it was unbelievable. He spent more time looking to see whether Havertz was offside when he was. You could see he was clearly onside than he did go. I, the minute he got sent to the screen, it was like no goal because yeah. it's never a goal. And but yeah. it's Michael Oliver, and I think that's the fourth time this season that he's ruled against Everton. And he, the fella, I'll say it for me, he's got a massive issue with Everton because he's a Geordie and his mates. And he, he's no, he has, he has. Yeah. It, it, that's the thing. Every time he has us, and if I was Everton, I would say he doesn't referee us again and make a big point of it, but we're too nice, but this, I would. This I'd, rivalry between you know, Everton and Newcastle has come yeah. out of nowhere, hasn't yeah, it, over nonsense. the last five, six years? And it's based on, I don't know what it's based on. Rafa Benitez, it started. 
<laughs> yeah. Is Rafa that what Benitez, it is? yeah. Just Benitez. I think and, it's based... and Pickford, Jordan Pickford. Yeah. That's mm. that's the thing. It's that because he hates them because he's Sunderland. It's got even worse. Mm. Um but anyway, it is yeah. what I thought it, it shouldn't have stood. Uh, obviously we we've, we've spoke about it a few times, but was there any you were there yesterday, mm. obviously? The end and the clapping and all that. I know you were looking for body language do, at Goodison. Yeah, was the body language yesterday? Branthwaite again. Yeah, I it's think very that, it's really. Stood, yeah, just he was stood away from everybody else, and he didn't come mm. over, and he was just like applauding, just like softly, and he just did. He just looked like he wanted the world to swallow him up. He really did, because because you can tell other people did all together. Yeah. He was away, and he was like a little bit away from the fans as well. And he was just looking in, and he just looked. He just looked like the, not dejected. I don't think that's the right word. He just looked like I don't know. He just look, looked so far away from everybody else, um, and he was the only one really. You know, mm. Pickford was giving it the big and as always, and. Mm. Onana, Seamus and all. I didn't really see Onana, but at least he was sort of together with other people. Mm. Branthwaite was isolated, Mm. and that's why Mm. I looked at him and just thought... Do you think think with Mm. Branthwaite... Because I don't get the feeling he wants to leave. No, I I don't. I do get the feeling Everton Football Club wants to sell him because he's he's and he'll be the one who got them. And up. he looked uncharacteristically unchar- uncharacter- off the game yesterday. Oh, I mean that pass early on that yeah. he played across his box and he yeah. got away with was mm. wasn't just not like him at all. No. But what's your feeling, lads? Do you think do you think we we quite possibly have that was his last game in Everton shirt, do you think? That would be my gut feeling, but I'd agree with you. I think he should stay another year. Yeah, hundred percent. I think I think well, for I think everybody benefits. I think he benefits in terms of his development, mm. um, you know, and plays. You know, we talked a lot about pressure before or, or, or lack of it. I think mm. it would be really good for him to stay another year, and also from a price point of view, you know, Definitely. assuming that he continues on the trajectory that he's on at the moment, mm. then you know he'd be a more developed and established mm. player. But unfortunately, my gut feeling is that he will probably go this summer. Yeah. That's Sam. what I, I I'd be surprised if he's if he's if he's still there in August, but I I I dearly hope he is. Mm. Well, every time we have a player who's head and shoulders above the others, I say it's not going to happen again. Mm. But I mm. love the man. Mm. <laughs> I love him, and I'm going to be so sad when he does leave. And it's when, not if. Mm. But hopefully, like Dave, you say we could get another year out of him. But it's just so difficult to because. You can't help it's an emotional game football and mm. and i understand where everton are in the scheme of things at this present moment where we're not going to retain our best players and, and push up the league we're going to have to do what you guys have talked about on this channel really well over time which is like you know bringing players in with the resale value and selling yeah. them on mm. but it's still when you watch them and it's, i don't know there's something about watching the center half with the panache that he's got yeah it just gives you that and i can see why liverpool fans are all over van dyke and, and say mm. he's the best player in the world ever that's ever lived because i'm <laughs> i'm watching Brantwick going there's something so nice about watching a defender who's not just efficient at defending he brings the ball out he can play the ball he's graceful mm. rolls royce of a player it's yeah. such a cliche but it applies mm. to him completely my other thing to just bring up at this point is I think a new show for Toffee TV next season should be Ped's Body Language. Mm. That would and be you good. Could just yeah. do it game to game yeah. and talk about because I think you've got a good eye for it, mate. Yeah. Well, you know, being and that's been said in yeah. the past. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you think? Uh, because I look, I mean, I think Sam's right. He's those kind of players. He always looks like he's got time on the ball, yeah. Brantwain. I think that's like what, Stones did. Yeah, yeah. But like I actually Great. think he's better than John Stones as a defender. Yeah, no, I'd agree. But Stones, Stones looked exceptional, oh, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, when yeah. at that time, uh, I, yeah. I just can't imagine Everton being any more vulnerable than they are now. Mm-hmm. And I just, if you're if you're the buying club, I look at that situation and go, these look, these need the money. They're massively vulnerable. And he's only going to get more expensive. Mm. Why wouldn't I buy him now? Yeah. And I think that's mm. where realism has to come into it. Do you think, all right, let me phrase it differently then. Do you think it's a case of if another bid came in, it, like say for Amadou or mm. Nana, who haven't seemed quite happy to let go, yeah, yeah. I would suggest, even though I thought he had a good game yesterday. Do you think that would strengthen Everton's position, give them a different, a different take on it? Or do you think it's... Well, it seems more. They likely. got him under. They got him under contract, didn't he? At least, mm. so so our hand is strong if we if we if we play it that way. But you're right. It co- it probably will come down to what the sequence of events are. Now, mm. if someone comes in mm. for Brantwick next week, or two or three teams start asking questions, then 
I can Everton seriously repel that? We already know we're going to have to sell. Or do Everton take the stance that they will sell Onana? No issues. But then do they need to sell another one? And then what if Dominic Carvalhoon doesn't want to sign a new contract? And what if the sequence of events leaves us in a position where we've already sold Brantwaite and Onana? And then Dominic Carvalhoon says... Uh, I'm not signing a contract, and suddenly you're like, well, we're going to have to sell him as well, otherwise he walks out the door. Mm. Everton have to I get know. their ducks in a row very, very quickly, and I imagine they probably already have and probably already know. Mm. And if they've said, this is the, this is what we... I mean, the best way to look at it is if Everton have said, this is what we want mm. for Jared Brandweight and clubs come in and meet it, and Everton have got someone else lined up, then so be it. Mm, yeah. But I've never mm. seen that at Everton before, no, ever no. in my that, life. That would be it. That would be a first, because yeah. Everton normally go, what, we've got a world-class player and someone wants to buy him? What are you talking about? Yeah. What? What? <laughs> Days? Have you seen this? He's gone. He's gone. Brantway's gone. Never saw this coming. Yeah. What's happened? No one's even I met. I better ring his mum. I'm gutted. No, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Hey, listen, but with regard to the uh, the Dom situation, mm. is that we shouldn't have any any worries because, of course, Mopay's coming back. Mm, true. Yeah. You know. True. So what is it to worry about? No. Nope. Has he only I... gone out on loan? Mm. He's got a year to go. Gram. He's got oh, a year that, left. I, I must have Absolutely. been following that story as closely as I thought. <laughs> I mean, he's made this position untenable here anyway. He's said a few yeah. things about Everton that he's never going to be accepted back by the fans. No. So. It's a, if you're his agent, you've, you've gone off your work cut out. You're gonna to have to get him somewhere. Else. Although his record, his oh, goals and that have done all right this year. The, the other side of it though is, again, this is you're talking about professionalism stuff like that. If you're a buying club, you're like, you can't come back to your club. We we'll give you three million quid for him, and you're just mm -hmm. like, thanks very much. You massive tit. Mm. You know? Get that on a t-shirt. Get that on a t-shirt. No, but again, you, you talk about, I mean, everyone, got, not everyone, but certain people think he's hilarious, some of his hijinks. But, like, as a professional, the things he said, you know, he, he celebrated Brighton scoring against us. Mm. You yeah. know, things like that. Yeah. And you think he can't come back to this football yeah. club. And an agent will be like, he can't come back to your football club. Whoever wants some three million quid, mm. and you're, you've put us in a bad position. Well, there must be like an, an agent's book of dirty tricks mm. where you you manoeuvre, you know, because it's all about politics at the end of the day, isn't it? A lot of stuff yeah. when you're on loan or you're trying to get a new contract. And just thinking about all those contract renewals that need to come in for Everton <laughs> God, yeah. so that we don't end up in that position where two have gone and Dom then wants to leave. Mm. Like, that is quite an administrative headache yeah. because... Surely that gives bargaining power to the other players mm. if they understand, mm. because they're not idiots or their agents won't be idiots, and the agents will know the bigger picture about where we are as a club and what's coming down the line, and and they'll probably talk to other agents and they'll know that X player X has got you know so long on the contract, so it's mm. it's uh, it's it's like audible, isn't it? This this is the this is the issue now, isn't it? We obviously since we recorded last week. <laughs> Triple Seven's house of cards as he fell even more, hasn't it, into the position where we're just the inev we're just waiting for the inevitable uh, announcement now that that is over, um, and obviously, hopefully, the the owner has got someone ready to go on tw at twelve oh one on the first of June, if uh, if this you know if the agreement is signed till the thirty first of May and he can't do anything about it, we'll we'll might no more this week, but. That's what we need to happen. We need that takeover done immediately. Let's hope it's with more suitable people um, with deeper pockets or a, and a better plan than maybe what was going to happen. And then that we might be able to look forward a bit. But we have still got this issue where decisions have got to be made on some of these players or we need decisions from those players like Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Um, because because he, other, other clubs would be... Other clubs would be clever to mm -hmm. take it or, or agents and all sorts of take advantage of the situation mm -hmm. because you know now would be the time to exactly. say, hand pick the best of our squad mm -hmm. now's the time oh, to exactly. do it. Mm -hmm. i went down to debenhams when they were closing down mm -hmm. <laughs> did you get and anything I myself stuff i didn't need yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff i didn't need dope didn't want still you always use, need towels got it, got sam Come on. Mm. Oh, I'm a very wet man. <laughs> <laughs> Unusually wet. Now, you'd think clammy. someone with no hair, you'd be less wet. 
Because that's the clam Avery. But that's the issue I have. You know, when I wash my hair, obviously the hair, the water just continues. It just—it's like a sponge, isn't it? Just releases. Mm. Where would you? You think you were like a little bit of, bit of a dolphin? You just give it a quick yeah. wipe and you, you're you're done. No, I don't know. <laughs> seal. I think Sam would be better getting like the wet moisturizer. You know, when you what? get out, you can get like that. You get out mm. the shower and you just rub that moisturizer yeah. underneath the towel and it, it dries. Well, the, I think the the, the, the think question so. is now, which one is he? A seal or a dolphin? I mean, that's the big well, question. I, I don't imagine he's a dolphin. I shimmer. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, ever is just going back to don't forget your toothbrush. Oh yeah, you know. I mm. wonder if there's any of that going on at Everton. You know, players just turn up with suitcases, going where am I off? Um, and waiting for the thing to come in. But what a show that was, by the way. Let's get I back to show. it. I never watched that Did show. Did you not? No, watch it? no, that was good. I was out actually enjoying life. You probably were, but it was it was good, mate. You know, you all these staying. You in, turned up it? with your suitcase to yeah. the studio. There was various games, mm. and, and you mm. ended up with the chance of a hostage. Chris Evans. Chris yeah, Evans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris yeah. Evans. Light, light your lemon. Light your lemon. You Friday night. The other one. Yeah. It was great. It was that great. That was the first show that I remember reading about. It was sold to like 165 yeah. countries, and all this money mm. was made. I remember sitting down with me mates. We were doing GCSE media studies, and we started trying to devise quiz shows <laughs> to try and cut. And we, yeah, we didn't Fair get play. very far. I was going to say, did you not come up with any? Because there's been no, some all... shite on the telly. Oh, yeah. Your yeah. ideas well, I... mustn't have been great, Sam. Do you know, do, do you know what? I, I, I was watching Tipping Point the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it was about a year ago, actually. I, I've been very busy. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the other day. It's, just, it's basically just the, the penny pushes in the arcade. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. yeah. That's all it is. I thought, I thought this, is, this is really poor entertainment. And about five minutes later, I was like, oh, he's missed it. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. it gets you. But it is when you watch that and you think, it is incredible the fact that that has been commissioned. Mm. Hasn't as Richard a, as Richard a TV Osman? Show? Richard Osman made a fortune out of commissioning uh, shows. Mm-hmm. And stuff. Yeah, they're all mm. his idea. I mean, but there what you about go. Kirby, Kirby, and Kirby, Kirby yeah. being uh, we could do that, yeah, we could do that, that because what? it's mm. it's a great game. Yeah, it's a great game. Mm. And I used to love watching Kabaddi, and that had a similar. Ah, oh, sort of Kabaddi! What a game Kabaddi was! I don't know that. You never seen Kabaddi? No. That was, was Trans World. Was it like a hacky? Was it what, what did they call them? It was, was it like called hacky tacks? It was like tick. No, it, it was, was like tick. So basically, do you ever remember? Got tick on the Do you ever remember Trans World Sports on Channel Four? I remember. Yeah, used to show all different sports. Yeah, basically, I think it was like orig- originated in like India, and it'd be a load of fellas on one side and all the fellas on another side, mm. all sh- about, all shouting Kabaddi at the same time. So be Kabaddi, Kabaddi. Kabaddi, Kabaddi. Sure and up. basically, they were just trying to tick the other side. And that was it. Was so you it? had to what? you what? had to get into the other side, uh, the other team's side. You yeah. and, and when it was your go, you had to hold your breath to, to mm. indicate to the ref that you were holding yeah. your breath. You had to keep saying, oh, Kabaddi, 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 Kabaddi. And when your breath ran out, you had to get back to your side. But what you had to try and do <laughs> oh is my tick God. someone on the other side, <laughs> yeah. tag them, and then get back to your side without the rest of it. Without dying. You I was going to shake. So, it was, it was, it was a really weird concept. But what's the thing that I'm thinking of that was like a? Do you remember those? They were like little bean bags that you'd sort of do keepy up. Oh these yeah, were they called yeah. Hacky sacks. Hacky sacks, sacks yeah. yeah. I was hacky but wasn't sacks. there? Wasn't there some kind of game that was based on that as well? Or am I just completely made? I think you've just made one up. The they've made one up. California Games, and one of the one of the games on that was hacky. Sack. One of the yeah, disciplines. Yeah, I can understand problem. that. I like Dingo as well. I've seen like the uh, where you've got to keep the balloon up. Oh, and they have like no, it's oh great party games. No, but it's like the avid so they they simulate like a room mm. or whatever, and, and the people have to go and it's like extreme, it's like extreme yeah, balloon yeah. keepy uppies. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> dodgeball was basically red ass, wasn't it? A, a different version. Mm. You just got to mm. throw a ball at someone. Yeah. Now what I mean, that became a you know that became a film with Ben Stiller in. Mm. Could Red Ass make it? And, and famous line Bulldogs, famously yeah, Lance Armstrong, a Hollywood movie. British Bulldog, shout it. It could be any Bulldog, I suppose. No, there's only one Bulldog. No, Don't but... sell it round. British. The world. I know, but to sell it round the world. I'm not sure French about Bulldogs as not well. Sure. That's very true. Yeah. No, there's not. Not in this country. <laughs> American Bulldogs as well. Yeah, gang of bastards. <laughs> What other, I mean, what other games could... I mean, Kirby is a good yeah, one. that's a cracker. You know, what other... If you think about it, what other games? Off-ground... What's the one where you've got to shove the, the penny to the end of it? I think they call it shove harpenny. Probably, you people. probably had it there. You probably told us exactly mm-hmm. what it's called. That's it. Explained it in the, in the what about so, What about a bit more extreme, like uh, Hostel? Where you... <laughs> 
<laughs> you've got to you've got to lure someone into a into a hostel and that, then that uh, doesn't sound no that well, sounds just, very edgy thought, yeah that's what i'm saying mm. late night channel four do you remember the do you remember um get a you get a thousand pound for every limb do you remember the the like the asian <laughs> ones they had the maddest ever <laughs> Didn't he? Yeah. He ate, like the, I don't know whether it was like China, to, but to, the to, game show. The, like Takeshi's Takeshi's Castle. Yeah. Oh, my Love God. That. Some of the Love stuff that. they Japanese, had to do. Yeah. Japanese, sorry. Yeah. Some of the stuff mm. they did was yeah. just nuts. Challenge TV. Well, yeah. Challenge where TV, isn't it? Not on Takeshi's yeah. Castle, but there was another Japanese game show where they used to drink three bottles of beer and then mm. they had to stand in the cold for as long as possible without wetting themselves. <laughs> and then mm. whoever wet themselves <laughs> last was the winner. Although, surely, yeah. if the other person's wet themselves, you don't. You're just the winner. You don't have to then wet yourself. Yeah, sure you, you don't. <laughs> yeah. How long can I go till I piss myself? Mm. Yeah. Well, you, you win, mm. but you've got to relieve yourself. It sounds like a stag do in December. Really? <laughs> Ma- Merge it with hostel? No. What, what's this <laughs> wet, obsession? Wet hostel. <laughs> wet hostel? What is the, what's this obsession with hostel? I'm just, Why do you want to lure people into a hostel? It might just be something I'm into. <laughs> Mm. It's getting dark, <laughs> this, isn't it? It is. That way you're seeing like your future fortune coming from that kind of game show. Not fortune, just pleasure. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's leave it there. Let's leave Listen, it. Listen, the, oh, the rates are great. You know, you can get a room for about seven pounds, whether you come out with a, with a, your kidneys or not, that's a different thing. Mm. I'm just, you know. Okay. Just, just it's it, that element of jeopardy, isn't it? It is. You it just is. never know. Is that what you're saying? It is. I, I was checking don't out. Don't forget your donors though. card. Yeah. I, 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 got, I got this letter through. <laughs> oh, go it on, was son. all about this personal injury insurance I've got that I didn't realise I've got. Yeah. On the back of it, it told me what I got for each like injury. Right. I mean, obviously, death's the most, but I yeah. wouldn't bet on it. No, I mean, really that's extreme. I mean, losing a limb is, is you get quite a lot. But yeah. losing like a toe that's not your big toe or your little toe, you get two and a half grand. I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. I tell you what. I don't need all my toes. No. Do I? Well, well, anything for the middle one. Anything in there <laughs> no, for nothing. hair follicles. Maybe I could just if I come back next time with like this big weave on my head, but hobbling a bit, walking mm. in circles. You know what's <laughs> happened. We'll know what's happened, happened, yeah. Come back with a full middle part. Been to my hostel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Been to your hostel, yeah. That's it. But would you give him hair though? You might take the toe, but would you give him hair? If he's lucky. Tuesday oh. night special. That a bone. Great parking and it's clean. Is that a <laughs> I think I want to leave now. Yeah, I think we're all going to leave. I think we're all going to... It is Will Young, I think I better leave right now, so let's go. Listen, lads, thank you very much. It's been absolutely Uh. tremendous. We always get this request. Can you just do one that isn't football-related once the season's finished? Oh, yeah. Listen, we'll see whether we can grab Dave and Sam for a less football-based... Mm-hmm. Uh, I would imagine that's entirely possible. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. <laughs> right, see, listen. If we, see, if, see if we can get hold of them. I mean, yeah. Sam, are you are you free next week? Yeah, <laughs> I just sit. I sit in this. Dave, room are you free next week? Hard, and then I wait for the yeah. next one. Sam you know, just we'll see Sam, next week then. Sam yeah. just waits for ac- accidental <laughs> Zoom calls. There he goes. And he's just ready. He's ready. Hey, that could be a game. No. Accidental <laughs> Zoom calls. <laughs> Hosted by Jackie Weaver. <laughs> Don't forget your kidneys. That- oh, there's another one. <laughs> Boom. Oh. Dave, where's your special effects to finish? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. There you go. Thanks oh. very much. Like, subscribe, give it a five star. Do all that. We'll see you later. Bye.